Hi folks and uh, welcome to our last lesson that is uh, without uh, bonus lessons of course that we follow this training and as you may remember I mentioned uh, somewhere at the beginning of the training we are going to take a look at Mo spline a little bit more in depth and specifically the L system built into Mo spline. Now this lesson will be split in two parts. In the first part I will show you how you can create jellyfish with just a few clicks and then most plan will slowly reveal its power to you. In second part I'll really briefly introduce you to L system which is really similar to programming but uh, that should not really scare you off since the possibilities of L systems are endless. And uh, you will see once we get to those L systems that they really cannot be explained uh, in a few minutes they will deserve a complete training volume for themselves. Since we are going to obviously work with most spline, I better load one and uh, for that jellyfish I had in mind because this is also a user request. I decided to do it because uh, I think this setup is uh, quite simple and works pretty well in most uh, situations and here under simple tab I'll first have to add some segments so let's try 50 like this and uh, really spread those guys completely because uh, that's what I need for this jellyfish. I hope that the jellyfish is correct term. Someone will correct me if uh, I'm wrong on this one. So let's proceed. Now let me just briefly doodle that. I will hide this guy for a moment and uh, what I want to achieve is uh, to have that uh, tentacles really obeying uh, the natural motion that you would expect to see from the jellyfish in water. So they should really go slowly up and down and uh, if we for example pull this guy then we should expect uh, those tentacles to go down. I really think it would be much more easier when I do this setup and uh, things will be clear then. Now I have to have some sort of a control for bending these guys up and down and that is exactly what this most line will give me under this bend i'll control the opening and closing with this so i might as well add this to hud and uh, i will right click on it to show always so i really don't have to dig through all these uh, tabs to access this setting what i would also like for this guy is uh, to have some sort of a uh, variation in thickness and I can do that with step effector. So I will load one and uh, maybe I will reset this spline and uh, flip it. Maybe you will be able to see this if I can pull this guy. Now let's open this in a new window because on the end of this menu there is a show in separate window command that will give us this guy and uh, I can show you all that commands that are accessible via this right click. So I will flip the spline and uh, we'll get that difference in scaling. I'm not sure that you can really see that right now but uh, it will be much more vivid once we offset these guys a little bit. So if this is going to be some sort of a jellyfish then we have to have some sort of a dynamic component to it. So it should really move naturally and wiggle or something like that. I can achieve that by loading a particle modifier into the most plan. So I will set this to include because I want to include some sort of effect and uh, this fields guy is simply a place where you can load this uh, particle modifiers. Now from experience I can tell you that this turbulence, wind and gravity work uh, solid enough with this most blind guy. In fact just turbulence and wind. So I would rather use one of them and although you would uh, go for a wind because it's much more natural I will actually select turbulence because uh, I think it gives me better results. Of course you are welcome to experiment. So I will load the turbulence, close this window and unfortunately CNO4D doesn't automatically load 
particle modifiers into generators that can accept them. That should be fixed by Maxon because I think it's really logical. Now let's drop that uh, turbulence inside and uh, you will see something happening. And if I press play now, well, the things will really not uh, behave as expected. And uh, first we have to change some things here and uh, look for the scale that pretty much works for you. So I would say much lower than this. Let's go with uh, maybe 100 here. And uh, although it really doesn't look uh, quite good, I will just uh, decrease the frequency. So the, the amount of jitterness in this motion, I hope the jitterness is uh, really real world. Let's go here with uh, 20 and uh, I think this will be okay for now. So let me stop this, go back. I should also increase the time. So let's go with 1000 here. I will say 1000 here to uh, expand to full time because we want to see the effect without uh, breaking the motion by pressing this little guy. So now I have a dynamic component to this and uh, I also have a control so I can bend this guy down or up. So it works combined and uh, really to pull this a step further, I'll play with some settings here under object tab. Here I want to offset this spline so they get a little bit of these curvatures. And uh, if I do that now, it will really not work as expected, but uh, if I change this to separate segments, then if I offset, let's go even to 50%, it will work as expected. So let's press play and see what do we have and how about that. And uh, actually I will lock this mouse spline and click off so we can see that uh, mouse spline's green color. And I still have this control for opening and uh, closing, of course. So I can really mimic that uh, motion, that natural motion from that uh, jellyfish. And you can see that uh, I can still move this guy and uh, you can even go a step further with this. I will stop this, go back and uh, I will add a formula effector to this guy and uh, it will just uh, enable scale here and uh, We'll get a really interesting effect so it's uh, like some sort of uh, deep sea jellyfish and uh, i can even decrease this time maybe to something like this and uh, the effect is really really cool so that was our jellyfish i hope you like this setup and now we can dig into l system in the second part of this lesson so let's get rid of everything in the scene and I will load a fresh mouse spline and I will set it to this turtle mode. Okay, so either turtle or L system, however you want it. And you will see some sort of a plant in the viewport, which is built from spline segments. And uh, here under object, uh, the settings stay the same. Now here under turtle, all I can say is, well, welcome to world of parametric. That means absolutely everything is set with parameters. And uh, this can be a little bit uh, scary at the beginning, but uh, I'll show you a few simple examples just to get you going and to push you in the right direction, because this L system is a really vast subject and it deserves a complete volume on its own. Now let's just for a second ignore this area because it's uh, really scary and I will explain you this uh, value step here. So let me just zoom in a bit so you can see that in action. And uh, first is the growth. So it means uh, how many segments, figuratively speaking, because I have to really use uh, terms that may not be correct, but it will give you a good understanding of it. So here is the actual growth of these guys based on the settings here. So you can create multiple sections. So I think it will be much easier to see. So completely new generation of uh, 
branches. So let me set this to default. This default angle really determines the angle of each new segment that is created. Once again, controlled by this area here. And uh, we will get back to this area, but uh, let me just first explain this. So you can see that in action, it really changes the angle and uh, you can see some really wild stuff going on. Okay, so let's reset that to default. Also now, this is the default scale. For example, if I play with this, you can change the scale settings of that spline segment that consequently controls the potential scale of the sweep profile in sweep nerves. This default movement simply tells how long is the movement step. So from here to here is that value. Also for this guy and uh, let me just show you that in action if I play with this and simply increases the length of the segment. Let's delete this little guy and I'm pretty sure you can uh, understand now why this is the last lesson and uh, and I'm also sure you can understand that we cannot go in depth with this and uh, what kind of the power is hidden in this most plan. So this tropism really controls the, let's say, a uh, natural tendency of the tree, figuratively speaking, to go towards the ground. So it would be some sort of a gravity settings. You can see that in action, so it really hangs the tree down again figuratively speaking because i really want to explain this in a language that you can relate to because this mode spline in this uh, turtle mode is really very similar to programming and uh, i really don't want to choke you with all that uh, technicality so here is the randomness i'm sure you understand that the seed for that randomness these are the multipliers so for example if you change this then each next generation of segments will be scaled by that multiplier. I hope that makes sense. You can see that in the viewport. And uh, you can uncheck this grow angle, scale or movement. Now, let me get rid of this completely, but uh, not by deleting this guy. I will delete this premise and these uh, rules because I want to explain this and uh, and I will really give my best to explain this one. This is somewhat complicated, but just bear with me for a moment. This premise guy, it's uh, actually a container for everything you state here as a rule. And um, you see, I have my help file docked and these are the rules and commands that are available or Mo spline in turtle mode and it really really looks scary but uh, let me just show you a few simple examples and uh, hopefully it will not look that scary so here I will enter a simple rule and the most common command in Mo spline is this F which means really move the turtle forward so you are moving the virtual turtle which leaves a spline trail behind and uh, it's far more complicated than that but uh, let's just leave it at that. Other simple settings are for example a rotation of that turtle. So let me show you the rule. I will say here that uh, F or we can go with A. So, so our first rule will be A and A has to be equal to something so a equals f okay so that is our rule here once i type in that rule and refresh you will see something happening here now i basically instructed this spline now to move forward because a means or equals move forward and it will move according to this value. So if I set this to maybe a larger value, it will move by the value set here. Okay, so I can reset that to default. This angle guy won't do anything now simply because I didn't instruct my turtle to turn somewhere. Okay, so 
If you take a look here under commands, you have uh, a few rotation options. So I will use maybe this first one, which means it will rotate the turtle clockwise. Okay, so let's try that. So I will put that plus sign in front of this F. So let's see what happens. And you can click here in this context ignore, which I will explain to refresh the system. So watch what happens. This guy now has turned by exactly this value and you can control that with this uh, guy here. Let me undo that. So basically what we are now saying is uh, that our A equals move this guy forward. So draw a line which is this long and rotate it clockwise by this amount. I really hope you are still following. So all that movement and rotation is contained in a single rule. What if I create another rule? Let's say B equals and let's choose another rotation option. So let's take a look here. It's uh, really impossible, especially for beginners to work without this uh, command list. So let's use maybe this uh, arrow up sign and see what will happen if I type arrow up and once again I will move forward. Well, nothing will happen. The reason for it is because all the necessary movement here and creation is executed through this premise. So I have to tell it here that I want to use that B. So let's type B and click here to refresh the system and see what happens. So now this guy rotated in another direction. So you can see clearly that is the case. Okay, I think that uh, things are beginning to make sense now a little bit around this uh, L system. Now what if I want to really create uh, quite a few of these uh, segments and turns for this guy. So maybe I will add here plus I have some move forward and rotate once again. So let's see what happens. And uh, that's really cool. And all this is contained in our rule A. So let's maybe try once again plus F. So we are steadily moving this guy and uh, we can go even a step further. And uh, this can work. This can uh, be applied. But what if you want to close this and form a circle? Well, it's much better idea to create a loop. Okay, so I will delete all these rules and here I will say F equals, so using the letter F and uh, that F will also serve as a premise and it will serve as a move forward command. So if I type here F and F here, let's see what happens and uh, it draws this guy. If I now type here plus F, let's see what happens. And uh, it creates a circle. And the reason for it is there is a looping through this command. So F equals move forward plus move forward. And then this F equals move forward and so on and so forth. So you now have a little bit of an insight how these uh, parametric splines are created. So they are pretty much the same, but on a far more complex level than the, you can imagine. But the principles used are the same. So I hope you will appreciate them now a little bit uh, more. Now there is one thing that I want to change here and uh, I want to change the use color. So I will set some color for this turtle spline and I will here under object display just the line. I can lock this guy and uh, we will now have a nice blue circle that we made parametrically here with our turtle spline. Of course, now this default angle will be really control the radius of this guy and this movement will control pretty much uh, the size. So I think that things will have more sense now. Let's create another simple object with help of this rules and premise. And before that, let me just briefly explain this context ignore. 
Well, basically here you can type some sort of a rule that will tell anything that is uh, inside these rules to be overridden. So maybe you would say that if uh, some segment is uh, larger than some value, then that will be ignored. And I really hope I didn't complicate this uh, too much. So basically it's a way of creating an ignore a rule for something inside here. So let's uh, delete all these guys and we will create a new mouse plan. So let's say that we want to create a simple object with a simple rule. Well, let's go with letter A and uh, you can use any convention or style or letter that really suits your need. But the uh, idea, the concept is uh, really the same. And uh, here, which is really close to programming, you will have to find your own style, your own concepts and ideas that work best for you. So here I will enter letter A because I want to use that A as a placeholder for everything I put here under this A equals rule. Now let's put F as a move forward and if I want to create a new branch, a new segment, I have to put that under these signs that are called brackets. So open bracket and uh, enter the up arrow sign that will instruct this segment to rotate and then I will put once again letter A because I want to create a loop and I will close the bracket. So let's see what do we have now. We have some sort of a curvature but beware you can use these values here. So if I set this to 90 watch what happens. So 90, I will create a rectangle. So there is a lot of power in this. And uh, for example, if I enter here plus, that means I want to rotate something again, because this plus guy, if you take a look here, also means rotate the turtle clockwise around the vertical axis. So these are the rotation guys and uh, if you're looking for specific rotation you really don't have to understand initially but really try it out and uh, see what works for you. So now I'll actually instruct this whole setup to rotate but uh, I will copy completely this segment and I will paste it and watch the result. It will once again create a loop and it will close the surface figuratively speaking. So if I click off, you will see the result. Now you can have fun with this guy, of course, with this uh, start and end settings and uh, maybe it is uh, much more appropriate in this uh, separate segment. So you can really draw things out and this uh, L system is uh, absolutely mind-blowingly fantastic. Now, one thing that I should mention here is uh, here is a result string to console. So it will print all the rules and all the execution functions to console. So here is our actual rule printed. So this is what this A equals gave us within our premise. Okay, so I hope uh, that makes sense. Let's clear out this once again and let me show you another simple example. Now, let's say that we want uh, some sort of a simplified plan. So I will create a simple rule for that. So first, let's call our rule maybe x because a bit really sounds cool. So x equals what? First, if I want this guy to go upwards, so if I maybe just press F here, and uh, in our premise type X, I will just get this guy pointing in this direction. If I want it to point upwards, I have to instruct it. So type that up arrow sign, and now my guy will point upward. And this angle defines how it will point upward. I hope uh, you are following this. Now I will just click off 
somewhere here so we can see that uh, blue line because this is locked and we can freely work on it so if i want to create a new branch if you remember i have to create a bracket and uh, here i can enter another command so let's rotate and move forward and close the bracket let's see what that gives us if i click anywhere other than this rules box and uh, this is what we have this is really cool we got a new segment here which is controlled by this value so if you play with these values they will change things this is a really important concept to understand so let's maybe add another rule so we will open brackets so new segments and uh, let's maybe use a different rotation so i think this is called backslash sign and let's once again move forward and close the bracket let's see the result and we have a completely new branch going upwards so let's try adding uh, one more bracket we will type the end sign hope that is uh, called end sign and also type f for moving forward and uh, closing the bracket let's see what we have now so you see i'm really branching out these guys I can also maybe just for the sake of the tutorial add one more bracket minus sign and also move forward and close the bracket so every each of these brackets contain a new segment so let's see how that works and uh, that is the branching this is really really simple branching now we can change the values here so for example i can tune this down just a little bit so let's say let's go with 45 and uh, i can now create a new rule let's say a which will equal move forward this complete setup so move forward x okay so if i now enter here a watch what happens it will create a completely new branch of the branch so this is a beginning of uh, let's say a really really simple plant and uh, this most spline is especially suitable for creating plant like structure so if i reset this to default now hopefully this uh, default premise and rules won't be that scary i should just mention that this T stands for tropism so it's really adding tropism to branches and uh, I think with this we will conclude our tutorial and uh, just want to take the opportunity to thank you for this purchase and as you may know the bonus lessons will follow after this and also there will be a topic on c4dcafe.com and uh, yours truly became an administrator on that uh, very popular Sina for the forum there will be a topic about this training where you can suggest bonus lessons where you can simply leave your impressions and uh, tell what you want to see in future trainings that is a really important and helps me collect uh, information on one single place so voice your opinions on uh, that uh, topic i believe it is uh, also worth mentioning that now i'm part of the Maxon beta team so that will help me create even better training content and i will be able to provide training content regarding new features much faster so once again thank you for the purchase and watching and i really hope you enjoyed this uh, mograph volume huge amount of work went to it and uh, i'll let you be the judges of how it came out that's it see you in the next uh, volume project training or bonus lesson.